Are you looking for a quick and easy way to produce videos for your students? My name is Olivier Charbonneau. I'm a librarian at Concordia University, and I want to show you how I've developed this uh, workflow to really make it easy on uh, producing videos. Now, uh, my constraint is I want to use material that I have at home, no special software, and just kind of hack through it. Uh, and I want to show you how to have this setup. This is actually, uh, I've, I've been uh, playing with these different setups and I find this one is really uh, a comfortable, easy way uh, to make these videos. Okay, so uh, let's, let's start. Uh, before you begin, you do have to prepare a little bit, uh, but obviously the first thing that I recommend is, you, is that you create a special user account on your local computer. Like if I, uh, you know, if you can't do that, then obviously I would disconnect from all of your different authentication systems, disconnect from social media accounts, disconnect from, uh, you know, like uh, your Google account, Facebook account, all those different accounts, because what you don't want is to have, uh, as you're typing in different websites and showing, showcasing different databases, uh, uh, you will have the autofill option from those systems pop up with your home address and some personal information. You don't want to do that. And so that's why I've created a distinct user account on my computer. So that's a great tip. The other thing that it allows is you could customize your accessibility settings. And so right now my computer is configured in English, but I'm a native Francophone. So my regular home computer is in French. So I don't want that. So now it, I have this account set up in English. The other thing that I've done is I've actually made uh, the uh, mouse cursor uh, gigantic. And this is an accessibility set setting for the visually impaired. But I find it's a really easy hack of, you know, using an operating system feature to make it uh, more accessible to your learners as they're trying to, you know, watch you on a tiny screen on their cell phone or whatever. It actually makes it a lot easier. And it you don't need any special software for that. You just change the accessibility settings on any OS operating system and you're good to go. Now, the last thing, obviously, is to uh, think about lighting. Yes, turn the lights on. I actually have this uh, room that has nice windows, so I get natural light in. Uh, but when I'm shooting at night, I have an inexpensive uh, you know, LED light that I uh, took from my daughter's room when they're sleeping. I just bring it downstairs and use that because that's you know, what I have, so that's what I use. Uh, you know, th that kind of stuff. So think about lighting. It's very important because it does produce that uh, nice kind of feel. Uh, the other the thing is to how do I get this the screen on my face in the screen how do I do that well here's here's the big secret I use QuickTime yeah good old regular quick QuickTime like if you if you go to QuickTime and you can see now that my my video screen with my face is larger because I'm in QuickTime but in file you actually have uh, a few different options. The first one is I start a movie recording. And this is this is the face that you see. I got this inspiration from watching vampire uh, series. Like vampires would, wouldn't be able to see themselves in mirrors, but they would use their smartphone as a mirror. And I'm like, wait a minute, that was my epiphany. I was, I was, I, I won't say which show, but uh, you know, the heroine was, a, was female. Anyways, she, so she was like, you know, looking at herself in, 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 in her cell phone using that as a mirror. And I'm like, wait, I could use my camera to start a movie recording of my face, but I don't actually start. I don't use that uh, movie recording of my face to capture. What I do is I then launch another QuickTime instance with the screen recording. Notice how my cursor, how you have a, a new movie recording and then a new screen recording. So I launch the movie recording. It's the mirror of my face that you see here, but what I'm actually recording on is a screen recording. And so when I click out of QuickTime and back on Chrome, Chrome actually kind of cuts off the part of the screen that I don't want uh, of, of my movie recording, and it captures the entirety of my of my screen anyway so that's a nice little hack because you know i was like doing post-production and doing image and image and loading you know like a movie editing software and that was taking forever and i'm like wait there's a camera that you know i could use to anyways so that's my hack that's my camera hack is I actually use quicktime twice once to launch this kind of camera you know with this movie uh, of my face that I don't record. This is not being recorded, the face uh, QuickTime movie recording. What I do then is launch a screen capture of my entire screen, but then my face is there. Simple hack, no editing required, good to go. 
Uh, the last one is I prepare a quick out outline, and that is just really for everyone. I use it for myself when I'm when I'm lecturing, but you know, it's it's good for the learners to have that so they get a sense of where they're at in the protocol. And I refer to it, so we're still at the before you begin. Uh, obviously, I've already begun, but anyway, so before you begin, these are some little things to consider. Now. Once you get ready to, you know, you've set up everything, you have your, you know, movie recording with your face in the corner, you've done your outline, uh, you have to be yourself. I mean, honestly, a lot of people are anxious about how they look and feel. And that's normal because we're not used to like having ourselves out there having a like a radio or TV show personality. Just be yourself. Be friendly. Uh, you know, and what I do is I actually have this little guy here. Let's see if I can. This is my friend that I talk to. I'm actually teaching this little toy that I keep on my on my computer. And I'm talking to this thing because that reminds me that there's somebody on the other end that's desperately trying to learn something. And I'm 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 it like I'm there. I'm there to help them. So just remember that, you know, you just be yourself, be friendly. And the rest is just going to happen naturally. Don't worry about it. Keep your videos short, 10 minute max. Like if you need a lot of grounds to cover, make multiple videos, stack them up and have say, oh, this is the preliminary video. And you know, I'll, I've covered this other part before. So you may want to watch this other video. So just keep it short, little snippets. I find 10 minutes is, is, is getting long. The final thing is don't edit. Don't, don't worry about, oh my God, I'm going to need to change this. This is literally the seventh take of this current video. I've tried to make this seven times and then said, oh no, this isn't good. I'm going to start over. And oh no, this isn't good. I'm going to start. It's easier to restart a 10 minute video from scratch than to keep it for later and edit it later. Because honestly, you usually don't have time for post-production. So you just want to, you know, throw away your the ones that you feel are uncomfortable and, you know, just work with what you got. Now, which leads us to the post-production. Um, I make the outline that I have here my description of the video on YouTube, which is so it's such a streamlined process once you've done that, because honestly, it is the description. You may want to write a little bit more, but I find that just copy pasting the outline is perfect for people. Um, the other thing is there are some simple post-production tools in uh, YouTube that are actually very useful. Uh, some, you know, captions and callouts and links. And honestly, you know, that's usually the best stuff that you could do uh, after you've produced your video. And, uh, you know, it, it perfect is something that we all uh, uh, strive for, obviously. But good is good enough. Like it's it's better to have these videos issued quickly and have a lot of them than actually spend a lot of time obsessing about. Oh my God, I didn't say this thing. It these are imperfect uh, objects that may or may not live through uh, time, but they're more important to be out there than they than they would be to be uh, per perfect. And yeah, um, I've been doing uh, YouTube videos for uh, a decade, which is long, and so I have found my voice. Uh, I have found my kind of like passion through this. Uh, I've practiced in front of the mirror. Uh, I've done all sorts of weird exercises. I've done some, you know, some quick theater classes as well, but they're all nice. But at the end of the day, just, you know, don't panic, be playful, enjoy yourself. And, and you're passionate about this stuff. That's simple to understand, right? Just, just go with that. Um, oh, final thing. I actually uh, don't use the trackpad on my on my laptop. I have an external mouse and keyboard because if you start fiddling with your trackpad, this is what happens. And so you, you feel like you're on, you know, like, a, 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 you know, on the bridge of a starship that's being attacked. So like everything starts shaking. Make sure that your computer is stable and use, just use an external mouse. Forgot to mention that at the beginning. And uh, so my name is Olivier Charbonneau. I'm a librarian at Concordia University in Montreal. Wishing you all the best. And uh, you could follow my blog at find.ca for more insight. I'll be posting a lot of videos about business research in Canada, which is my day job as a librarian. I help the business school. So I'll be uh, producing a lot of the videos of these videos in the next uh, few uh, weeks. So watch out for that. And they're, they're all going to be posted on my blog. So enjoy and uh, see you around the internet. Take care.